Hey, Terry Cutter here, and I got some really great feedback about the last video we just did, where we demonstrated how the hackers can bypass two-step verification. And when I did it live in front of the audience, uh, it was like deers and headlights, right? <laughs> they were like, oh my God, I can't believe this is happening. How do we stop this? So in this video, this is more for the IT department, we're gonna show you how to configure what's called phishing resistant MFA to help lock down uh, and protect the users who are clicking on links that they're not supposed to. So let me show you what this looks like. All right, welcome back. This demo is going to continue where we left off after we just showed you how a hacker can access your Microsoft 365 account even with multi-factor authentication turned on. Now we're going to show you how you can actually protect an entry ID account from a phishing attack that was carried out with a tool like Evil Jinx simply by enabling phishing resistant MFA. And we're going to do this by using conditional access again to enable this behavior. So in the last demo, we set up a test user, Grace Hopper, with required weak MFA, which is really just any old MFA method. And we also showed you that even by using the Microsoft Authenticator app, she was still able to get phished. So now we're going to strengthen this by using a different policy here that we're going to turn on. We're going to be using the same user Grace here, but in this case, we're going to require phishing resistant MFA, which is basically a FIDO2 security key and not just regular MFA. All right, so let's turn this on and see what happens. Now, as you can see that this policy has been turned on, and before we actually carry out the attack with Evil Jinx, let's actually see what's really supposed to happen when Grace signs in with this new policy turned on. So this is Grace's office computer, and as you can see in her intro profile, she has a variety of different authentication methods turned on. She's got her Microsoft Authenticator, a one-time based password, but she's also registered with a FIDO2 security key, which is actually the Hyper app, which means she's registered with a Hyper Enterprise Pass key. So what this basically means is, if she ever forgot her password, well, even at this point, James Bond would need tech support to log in. So this is what we're gonna be using to do our FIDO2 authentication and to simulate or test that it's working. Now we're gonna open up a private incognito browser window over here, and we're gonna have her sign into the same site. She'll type in her username, then she'll type in her password, and at this point, instead of her having all those other MFA options that we had before, She's only able to pick the phishing resistant options now. And as you can see, she does have a user certificate enrolled. So this is why she has this option, but she can also use the FIDO security key or biometric. So she clicks on this and chooses the security key option. This is when she can get prompted to insert her security key. And what this really means for her is that she's going to open up the hyper app and wait for the prompt. And there it is. She accepts does the biometric thingy. And we're back to the same page. So this is the experience that Grace would normally expect to have if everything was working correctly. And if the FIDO2 security key was also working correctly. But pay attention here. Notice that throughout the whole process, the domain was correct and she wasn't at the phishing site. So this is what's supposed to happen when she logs in, right? This is normal login behavior. So let's see what the attack would look like instead. So we have our Evil Jinx server here, just as before. We've got our Microsoft 365 fishlets active. We have our lure as well. And if we get the URL for that lure, this will be simulating Grace getting fished again via an email or her Facebook or some other, some other way that she clicked on this link. Now, because she wasn't paying attention, she actually thinks this site is real. But as you can tell, the domain is wrong. It's the phishing site, just like last time. So again, you'll notice that Evil Jinx has detected a new visitor that's arrived. And in this case, it's Grace. So now she's thinking it's a legitimate site. She's gonna enter her email address or her username. Then enter her password. And Evil Jinx does capture her password, as you can see. But in this case, because we have phishing resistant MFA, she's still met with the same prompt where she has to use one of the phishing resistant MFA options. And if she thinks, okay, I'm just gonna continue and choose my FIDO2 security enterprise key, then you'll notice that everything just stops. Now there could be a couple of different behaviors here, but what basically ends up happening here is that she actually never completes the sign-in process. Now this user may be confused as to what's going on, but at least she didn't get phished. And if we look over here on the Evil Jinx side, we look at the sessions, we'll choose the last session, and as you can see, there was no session cookies captured like the last time. 
So this is how you can protect a user with phishing resistant MFA enabled and conditional access in Intra using a security key like in this demo using Hyper Enterprise Passkey. If you'd like help locking down your environment the right way, then I invite you to visit SciologyLabs.com or just book a free strategy session with us. Stay safe out there because the hackers are watching.